how has this turnaround happened for somebody who took on a difficult job, made environment and green issues really a world issue? The, pa your, the panel you headed won the Nobel Prize. You were fated globally, celebrated by India. And suddenly in the last few months, things just seem to have gone wrong. Where would you pinpoint this turnaround? Well, life has ups and downs, and I think one has to take everything in one stride. Mm -hmm. The basic fact is that there are a number of people who would like to deny the science of climate change, who would like to deny the work of the IPCC. And since I'm the chair of the IPCC, and therefore I certainly become a target. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also unfortunate that we found an error in our uh, fourth assessment report about the melting of the Himalayan glaciers, which we have regretted. Mm -hmm. But the fact is we've listened and learned, and we've done something about it. We've set up an independent uh, review committee, uh, the Secretary General of the UN, Mr. Ban Ki-moon, and myself, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to look at our processes and procedures. But the basic findings of our report are solid and robust. Mm -hmm. The fact is that the world is going through uh, enormous changes in the climate, which are caused to a great extent by human actions. And I don't think we can deny that. The world has to accept the fact that we've got to take action to deal with the problem of climate change. So you don't agree with those who said that the setting up of that independent panel to review the work of the IPCC is a larger admission of failure? No, not really. I mean, one, uh, in science, uh, review is very much part of the legi legitimate process of, of learning, of mm -hmm. doing things better. Mm -hmm. We are now starting the fifth assessment report, and we want to be absolutely certain that to the extent humanly possible, we do away with the possibility of of error mm -hmm. and therefore this review we believe will help us they'll tell us how we should apply our procedures and our practices more rigidly yes and i'm looking forward to it so you know it's not an admission of failure it's an expression of hope that mm -hmm. we'll do much better was was the turning point i mean there were indications of course earlier before copenhagen when i think uh, where our reporter brought up this issue of the indian government report in himalayan glaciers seemed to contradict yours was the turning point somehow Copenhagen? I mean, I've seen in recent interviews that you kind of indicated that, that the failure of talks at Copenhagen indicated a larger drift in the way the, the world was being divided against pro-climate change and anti-climate change uh, understanding. Well, some curious things happened at Copenhagen. You know, there was that, um, uh, that news about the leak of emails from mm -hmm. the University of East Anglia, which apparently was found some months earlier, but was exposed only during Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. Then several other things have happened since then. The fact is, if you want to know, in Washington, D.C., this is a matter of record, there are 2,300 lobbyists whose only job is to see that no policy or legislation takes place on climate change. And I believe they are funded by 770 companies. This is there in the records of the Center for Public Integrity, a very prestigious organization in mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. So there's no getting away from the fact that those who are deniers of climate change have been lying in wait, have been organizing themselves. And the moment this opportunity arose, mm -hmm. they decided this was their moment to strike. Mm -hmm. And since then, they have been on a rampage.